Hi, Brittany. Hi, how's it going? Good. I'm so glad you could hop on this conversation. I can't tell you how excited I am to chat with you about all of the things. Um, when I started doing these interviews, I mean, you were definitely on the top of my list of people I wanted to talk to. So I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, this is Brittany. She is a very successful food blogger, runs Eating Bird Food, um, and I've known you probably, well, inadvertently probably for over 10 years because I think I discovered your blog back around like 2009. Um, and then we're both in Richmond, Virginia. So I actually like remember seeing you. This was probably, yeah, 11 years ago, like outside of the Kroger in Carytown. And I was like, that's Brittany from eating bird food, like in the flesh, because, you know, I was so into bloggers. And so it was kind of like a little bit of a girl crush celebrity moment. Um, and then, you know, just being in the health space, we became friends. And um, so it's been so great to just kind of like, have you as a confidant and colleague in this space. And um, I'm gonna let you kind of introduce yourself and tell a little bit more about your story and how you got to where you are. Sure, thank you. You're very sweet. That was a really <laughs> nice intro. Um, so um, I started blogging in 2008 and it was more of like a food journal and a way to keep myself accountable to being healthy because I'd lost weight in college and wanted to continue that. Um, or just like maintain my weight and stay healthy um, once I got out of college and was living in Richmond. So that's why I started the blog. And it was sort of a passion in college. I thought maybe I'll change my major to nutrition. And then the school I was going to didn't have like an RD program. So I just took some nutrition classes like on the side and then still continue with my major in marketing. And then after college, I was working at a real estate company and I wanted that outlet with like the health and fitness space. So that's when I started eating bird food and I did it for about, I think six years part-time. So continued with my marketing career, moved on to educational software. Um, then I worked for Relay Foods, an online grocery store for a bit. And then while I was working there, I was doing kind of everything that I wanted to be doing for my own brand for them. So they were in the food space. So I thought it was like my dream job of like working for a grocery store and in the health health food space. Yeah. Um, but I was just spreading myself way too thin, trying to work for a startup company as well as run my own like side hustle kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I gave my notice there and that was a scary time of deciding like what direction to go, what to focus mm -hmm. on. Um, and then, yeah, so now I've been doing eating bird food for about, I think it's like five or six years full time. Mm -hmm. I should know that number, but I don't, yeah. um, but yeah, so, and that's sort of where it started. And now it's kind of morphed into more of a food recipe site. I do share some, um, just like health tips and wellness stuff. And then stuff a little bit about lifestyle. Like I shared Olivia's birth story. Mm -hmm. Um, I shared like, you know, favorite food products and baby food stuff now too. Um, but it is heavily recipe focused and, um, yeah, it's less about me and more about my audience now. Yeah, um, and I think that's great. And I definitely want to unpack that a little bit, especially with the evolution of your blog and kind of your work in the space um, for the past 12 years. Um, but I would be curious to kind of go back to a little bit more of your like food story and what influenced you to start the blog in the first place, because I think so many people, especially women, are on their own journey with food, right? And whether their goals are to lose weight or to just maintain or um, heal digestive issues or what have you. Um, so can you kind of talk about what your way of eating like was, you know, before you kind of discovered nutrition um, in college and then how, like what encouraged that shift or to get healthier? Um, and then how I would be so curious to know, like your relationship with food, how it's evolved over the years, especially being very heavily in this space. Sure. So like I was saying in college is when I kind of, my eyes were enlightened to nutrition. Um, my freshman year, I was just basically, I was determined not to gain the freshman 15. Yeah. So I just started going to the gym. I wasn't doing anything like revolutionary. I was literally like walking or on, on the elliptical. Um, and just started eating healthier, just, you know, at the salad bar, at the cafeteria and stuff mm -hmm. and reading magazines, you know, the standard stuff that you do when like you're yeah. younger. So 
I started um, also like counting calories, all that. Mm -hmm. So I lost uh, 15 pounds instead of gaining. So I felt super proud of myself. And I think it was just realizing that like, it didn't have to be crazy strict diet or anything. I was just moving more and eating better because I grew up like very Southern, like a lot of convenience foods too, like hamburger helper. Like I grew up on all the, like, (laughs) what are those things that you like dunk, uh, you know what I'm talking, Dunkaroos, oh, stuff yes. like that, just yeah. like snacky mm-hmm. stuff. And even yeah. in high school, I was still eating those like snacky foods. Yeah. Um, so then I just, re- I realized like, I love this. I'm really passionate about it and I see what it's done for me. And I wanted to share that with others. And so that's why I started to get really interested in nutrition um, and thought about exploring the registered dietitian path. Mm-hmm. I didn't mention this, but I went on and did um, Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which I know yeah. you've done too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it sort of just evolved from there. And I all I always have had, um, you know, a super interest in how nutrition works and how to feel better overall, yeah. like, and how food really affects how you feel um, in a big way. So, but I also, I know like throughout my path, I did take it to extremes at some points, just yeah. like, you know, and yeah. I, I think a lot of people do that. Like you get right on this there one end you. of it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and now I think I'm, I'm like super balanced, like, and I also think being pregnant for whatever reason, just gave yeah. me like the freedom to gain weight and not be worried about it. And I know I was worried, honestly, like I wrote an Instagram, a post about this while, like, as soon as I got pregnant of like being worried about how I would feel about my body gaining weight. Mm-hmm. And it was like actually very freeing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I think I feel the best. I'm, I'm definitely not like the lightest I've ever been or eating the healthiest, especially right now with quarantine, but yeah. I still feel really good. So I don't know what changed. It was like a mindset shift. I'm not yeah. sure how. And I think yeah. that's so important for people to understand too, because like, just like you said, like it wasn't even like a physical, it was like an inner environment type feeling of more confidence in your body. And I feel as if for someone who's been on like a dieting journey and, um, you know, very, have been very into like disordered eating with myself and, um, it can, it's like, um, you, it's like almost the appreciation for your body has to come first because what you're trying to gain is that feeling of freedom. Right. Right. But the dieting mindset and the restriction is never going to get you there. So it's like that comes first and you can like feel that first. Like, I feel like that makes the journey with health and food and your body more of a, pleasurable one. And you can sort of, it helps to reestablish your why of why you're doing it. Like you want to feel good. It's not about the number on the scale. Right. But it's, it's hard to like, I mean, if someone asked me how to get there, it's really hard to explain how that happened. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the, cause not a lot of people think about the mindset side of things. Right. And, you know, as a health coach, and I know that you had a stint in coaching too, which I want to ask you about in a bit, um, you know, I started to really hone in on the mindset side of things and the food relationships. And people would look at me like a deer in headlights because they wanted quick fixes. They wanted the answers. They wanted to be told what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat. And like my straightforward answer to that was like, I can't tell you that. Like my responsibility as a coach would be to, um, provide you with the objective nutritional science so that you can have the information to feel empowered, to make the right choices. But at the end of the day, like it's so much more about the mindset side of things, you know, than it is about, you know, the food, because a lot of the right. times, like as women, we just have emotional relationships with food. And so, right. you know, there's that story there. And a lot of the times, like it's not even about the food, right? Like it's just right. about something deeper. Um, and people couldn't wrap their head around that. Um, yeah, it's so true. And then the other part of it is you do have to learn that you have to eat more. <laughs> At least I yeah. had to learn that, um, that it's not always like the less the the less you eat, the healthier you're eating. Mm-hmm. Um, I, asked, I guess I forgot a big piece of my journey. I also went through like not having my period after yeah. I got off birth control. Um, and I saw like fertility specialists and I, we weren't trying to get pregnant, but I really just wanted to like, um, 
get control of my hormones. Yeah. And I did acupuncture and basically the fertility doctor was like, you need to eat more and exercise less, even though Mm -hmm. exercise is a good stress, it's still stress on your body. Mm -hmm. Um, and everybody's threshold is different for stress. And, um, also eating, not eating enough is stressful on your body too. For sure. So, um, yeah, I went through that and I, I did have to gain weight at that point to get my period back. Um, so I think that was a big piece of my journey too. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of reminded me of like being in college and, um, that's when like the height of my disordered eating started. And, you know, obviously I have awareness for it now that it was more about a control thing. Um, and how like, there was a lot of imbalance in the more abstract areas of my life. So like, you know, food and exercise is something tangible that you can hold on to. So, you know, it was a lot of the restriction, a lot of the over-exercising, a lot of the calorie counting. And I will say that when I discovered blogs, um, like specifically yours and like carrots and cake and like Kathy eats, like there was this whole community. Um, it kind of showed me like firsthand, like you know, and everyone, ha- you don't see everything. There's like a behind the scenes, like nothing is perfect, but it was like, oh, here are these women like living their lives and like enjoying food. And like, I can have that too, you know? So it yeah. like, almost taught me what was, it showed me what was like possible in a relationship with food and like what balance yeah. even was. So just, you know, I kind of wanted to say thank you for being part of that movement because I, I think Aww. even though you don't necessarily know firsthand who you're helping or who is reading, like it, they're out there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I know that it, actually I get emails a lot and that's what like keeps me going. Cause I'm like, I am, I am helping people and that's really my main goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, obviously you do such a good job of being so authentic and, and not only a it's not only about the recipes, but you do like share your thoughts and feelings and your struggles and, and all of that. Um, so I kind of want to go back to, cause I know I felt this in my path before and I know other people do as well, but I want to go back to that, um, period of your life where like you were working for Relay Foods or whatever, but you were also doing this passion project on the side and the difference in kind of, cause like, you know, we have this mentality in our society that like, oh, we just, we should feel happy like doing other things. And I felt that same way at Health Warrior um, when I worked for them of like, oh, but I'm in this space that I'm so passionate about. And yeah, um, you know, it checks all the boxes, but there was this like feeling that it like wasn't completely aligned. So tell me like, what was it like, what did you have to do or what kind of courage do you have to have in order to take that leap? And like, what kind of conversations did you have to empower yourself to like do something that was more scary, but you knew that in the end would be more fulfilling? Yeah, I think it wasn't anything about the job that wasn't um, the right fit for me. But I think at the time trying to do both was the challenge. Like mm-hmm. I just, I just felt like I wasn't giving hundred percent to anything, especially with doing both with my friends and family. Like I felt yeah. like that was suffering my relationships. And then, um, I just felt like there was so much more potential for my blog and website that I didn't have the time to do because of having to, um, work. And so yeah. like with the traditional job, so what we did is I talked to Isaac about it. And at some point I said, well, I should just give up the blog and focus more on my career. And, you know, he's like, that's not really an option. You've worked so hard at building it to where it is right now. Mm. And I was making, I don't even remember how much money I was making, but I was thinking, well, if I were to take the 40 hours or, you know, 50 or whatever, I was working for Relay and put that towards time spent towards growing my website what would that equate to? And it was hard to know that, but like, you know, I was feeling like, well, I could probably like double what I'm doing now if I was, you know, doing it um, more full time. Mm -hmm. Um, And if it didn't work out, then I could find another job. That was just what I said to myself. Yeah. Um, And who, I didn't have to go to that. I didn't have to resort to that, but um, I think I felt really nervous about doing it because I had seen other bloggers in the space do it, but I felt like all of them, they didn't explicitly say this, but I felt like all of them, their husbands would have would have been take to, would have would have been able to take care of everything if things yeah. didn't go well um, yeah. for their blog. And for me, Isaac was a teacher, so yes, we probably could have made maidens meet for a couple months, but like it wasn't the same as having like a different of him having a different career, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It felt more risky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. It did. Um, so 
yeah, that's, that's where we were at with it. But we always knew, like, I also said, well, we don't have kids right now. We don't have debt. We were just, you know, renting a house. Um, Mm -hmm. And if we needed to, like, we could downsize, we could, like, I could just get a different job. Um, And I think also having in 2008 is when I got out of, um, I got out in 2007 out of college. And then the recession hit in 2008. So I lost my job and was Um, laid off for like three months Mm -hmm. and I got through that period so I felt like if I can get through that I can get through anything (laughs) yeah and I think that that's where like the hindsight perspective is so um valuable because yeah you know and I really think that that just comes with life and experience and yeah as you get older you're like okay I've been here before maybe not in the exact scenario but I got through that so like it just teaches you to be a little bit more strong-willed, I guess. Yeah. But then also as you get older, like right now, if I was grappling between the two, it would be really scary and more risky because of like right. just everything, go- you know, I have a yeah. baby now. So it's just yeah. a lot more, a lot yeah. more at risk. Yeah. And because I know you personally, I know that like health coaching used to be an aspect of your business. Um, yeah. So did you go through something similar with that? Because I felt as if like, Um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like, it was almost this, and I felt the same way with health coaching too, of like, almost like a feeling of like, oh, well, this has the potential, um, to be a big revenue driver. Like maybe this is what I should be doing to supplement my income and like giving that aspect up is kind of scary too. Like, did you kind of have to feel like you went through another leap with that side of things to kind of focus primarily on the blogging side? I think so. And with health coaching, I loved it. Like I loved working with clients, Mm -hmm. but there was also this piece of it of like it putting me on the spot and I'm not, I don't love being put on the spot. And so sometimes, um, I would have my health coaching appointment, like set for 3 PM or whatever. And all day I'd be like nervous, like waiting for our appointment. And then things would go so well. And on the call, it'd be amazing. And after what, afterward, I'd feel so energized, but like the days leading up to it and the day of, I was just like, so stressed it just took a big toll on me in a way that like, it's just my personality, I guess. Yeah. Um, that felt really stressful and I liked doing it, but at the same time I was ready to, yeah, to give that piece up. Yeah, no. And I, and I get that feeling a hundred percent and, you know, and it can be like a very emotional experience. Um, yeah. and I know for me, like I'm very introverted too. And so I, same kind of deal. Like I remember being in the coaching experience and even afterwards, I'd feel very energized and aligned, but it was almost like this depletion that would come afterwards because it's just, you know, if you care, you're just giving energetically so much of yourself, especially like during that call. And, um, and I think that that was very important for you to listen to like both sides of that coin that like, yeah yes, there was the positive of knowing that you were helping people and that you really liked that work and it did energize you. But there was that other side that was like, okay, this isn't, you know, necessarily exactly it of like where I want to be with my work on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. And I think I realized that I just enjoyed being in the kitchen cooking um, more Yeah. Um, And the work of writing and the blog posts and stuff. I think I just realized I like that more, but then also I'm so glad I did the health coaching and I'm so glad I got um, my health coaching certification because it did give me that like validation in the space too. Like I felt like having that knowledge was really helpful and I can put that I'm a health coach um, and that I have that background. So yeah, I don't, I'm not, I don't regret doing it at all. Um, Just, it was just, you know, the progression. Yeah. And I think you're still, um, coaching in a more indirect way. And I know that for me, like I never did, I did meal plans very early on, but then I realized that that was just becoming too much. Um, yeah, that's like a lot of what people need, especially like busy working moms. And, you know, they, they just in an attempt to get healthier, they're just looking for a resource that they can turn to, um, when it comes to providing healthy food for themselves and their families. And, and you do such a beautiful job of that. And like, I mean, I know that when I'm looking for recipes or whatever, like your site, number one is what like comes to mind, especially like on the, on the treat side of things, you are um, a <laughs> very talented dessert creator. Um, but no, yeah. So I just think like you're still doing that in, in some way, shape and form. 
Yeah. And I do have meal plans and stuff and yeah. I haven't run them in a while, but I used to do little like challenges. Um, actually I think I still yeah. have like a salad challenge people can sign up for, yeah. but I do think the meal plans are so helpful, especially if, yeah, you're just looking to eat healthy and you don't have the time to like scour Pinterest and like mm -hmm. make your grocery list. And now with ordering online, it's just so easy because yeah, I have the shopping list laid out for you. You can just place your order and you're ready to go. Yeah. So blog started in 2008. It's now 2020. Yep. And the, um, the web sphere and social media has changed dramatically. So how have you had to kind of like flow with those changes um, when it comes to like blogging? Um, and have you like felt any like resistance of that or has it even like changed things for you at all? It just seems so different now than what it used to be. It is so different. Like when we started, Instagram wasn't even a thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, YouTube was a thing, but not a ton of people were doing YouTube. I don't feel like at least I wasn't watching it or anything. Um, so it has changed a ton, a lot more focus on video, a lot more focus on, um, I think just, well, maybe, maybe it's, it's just different. I was going to say sharing more of your personal life, like on Instagram stories and stuff, but I think I was sharing way more of my personal life on my blog early on. And it was more mm -hmm. of a journal and people checking in every day to like, see what's up. Like I had a blog role and I would go and check in all my favorite bloggers. Mm -hmm. um, and now I feel like it's, people maybe still do that. Um, I don't think like, obviously blog role doesn't exist anymore, but yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like your uh, Google feeder, Google, Google reader, I guess. Yes. Um, I remember that. And there was like conferences, like the blogger conference yeah. and all of that stuff. Yes. And I would just like, it would be all on my like bookmarks and I'd be like, Oh, it's my lunch break. Like time to read yeah, my blogs. That's, oh, you know? Same. same. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it's a little bit different now. And um, my audience, like my audience is different too. I feel like at, at the beginning stage, it was a lot of other bloggers or other people um, yeah, other bloggers reading each other's blogs. And now, yes, I read other blogs still, but um, it's a little, it's just different. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I've had to grow a lot. I've had to learn how to shoot video and then realize like, I'm not very good at that and have hire someone to do that. Um, yeah. And it's also grown in ways like where I have a team now. I have three um, part-time like contractors who work for me doing different things. And there's no way I could do it all. So um, I'm very, very grateful to have a team. Well, that's, I mean, and that's so awesome and something that people need to hear. And I mean, I constantly need to be like reminded of not feeling like you have to do it all. And that like delegation yeah. is there for a reason. And if there's something that might be like, not necessarily your strong suit, there's someone out there that can and wants to do it. So right. I mean, I think that that just, makes your business and brand and ability to focus on the things that you do love to do and are great at. Um, whereas just like, you know, kind of delegating what it is that, um, you don't necessarily want to do. So I think that's really important for people to hear because I mean, there's so many people out there with that mentality, that superwoman complex. That's like, I need to do this all. And it's like, no, well, just ask for help. <laughs> I know, but it is so hard to give up your yeah. control if, yes. especially if it's your thing and you've been in control of it. Like I had, I didn't hire anyone for years, so it was really hard, but now I love it. I love yeah. being able to have help. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so speaking of Instagram, I mean, in just a few short years, you have grown your audience like a hundredfold. Like it's, you just exploded. Um, so clearly what you put out there resonates with your current audience and you're constantly attracting new people into it. Um, so what do you attribute that to? Mm, I think a big part of it is being consistent. And that was mm. the same with blogging is I've always posted often and trying to keep up with the trends. Like right now we post like two or three times a day. Um, I think engaging on there and actually not just like posting and hopping off the app and saying, Oh, I'm done with my Instagram post for today. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh gosh, um, I'm guilty of that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes I, it's a love-hate relationship, right? It's just like, yeah, you don't want to spend too much time on it. You know you have to do it, but you also are yeah. like, oh, I got my post up and now I can go do other work. Right. Um, especially when it's not, like for me, 
promoting my content and creating content is my, that's my full-time job. Whereas a lot yeah. of people who use Instagram, it's just promoting their business and they're doing a whole other business that they have to run, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's engaging, being really authentic and sharing um, on stories in that way, um, I think has been helpful and helped me just like build the relationships. It's been really nice because I used to um, connect with people through comments or emails. And now yeah. I feel like social media is a big way I connect with my audience and find out like what recipes they want next or just what their pain points are, like what they need help with. Maybe it's meal planning or um, how to make salads more satisfying, just different things. Like, I feel like I learn a lot on the app and listen a lot. Um, and then I think videos have been a big help. Yeah. Um, they, I think probably about three or maybe three or four years ago, those hands and pans type videos became really popular mm -hmm. and they were something that people can share really easily and they just did really well. And I think that as people who do those, I feel like have had a lot of growth. Yeah. Um, and now it's like, you know, switch to reels where like the reels are really popular and Instagram's also promoting those. Like, I feel like they show up first in your feed and yeah, I feel like know. it's just almost like a response to, to like the TikTok thing that happened oh, over the summer. Yeah, for sure. Or like, no, like we have this and we can do it better and just like keep it all under one platform. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like how they I know, respond I, to the Snapchat. With the exactly. Stories. Yeah. So I make my um, TikTok videos and then put them on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. Um, the, yeah. The interface is easier. So that's why I do that. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I think I like down. It's funny you should say that because I did download TikTok when I first heard of it. It was probably over the summer and then my iPhone keeps telling me that I've like run out of space. So I'm like went oh. through and like was deleted. It was like TikTok app and then it was like never used. So I was like, all right, delete. So I was like, delete. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but it a is, lot of people it, love it. It's a fun distraction. It's fun. Yeah. And actually like I thought, oh, it's just people dancing and, you know, being funny. Um, but it actually, you can learn a lot on there. <laughs> like yeah. it actually is like in I wouldn't think it was a platform for food, but it actually is. And you can find your little niche and people yeah. who follow and have questions, same as Instagram. Um, I mean, I don't have a big following on there, but it's been fun. So yeah. I, I've had fun with it. All right. Well, I might have to check that back out. Um, yeah. So speaking of healthy food and recipe creating, I mean, I know I've said this to you before, but you're just like absolutely so talented in um, you know, creating the healthified dishes and desserts. And, um, so I'm just like, how do you get your inspiration? Oh, so a lot of times it's things from my childhood that I want to make healthier. I do. I've yeah. done that a ton where I take recipes that my mom used to make or my grandma used to make and make them healthier. And, um, then the other things is like going to restaurants or whole foods or, like Elwood's, our local um, health food store, and seeing something like on their hot bar that I'm thinking, or salad bar that I think, oh, that would be really fun to be able to make at home. So mm -hmm. I'll just see the ingredients and then try to recreate it at home. I love, I love doing recreations. Actually, it's probably one of my favorite things. Um, or like homemade butterfinger, you know, just different stuff yes. like that. Oh my god, I need to try that. I've been like thinking about that since you first posted it. I was like, that oh. was like my favorite thing. And cause I like had done the other treats or whatever, but Butterfinger was never something I tackled. And I was like, oh, this is genius. You have to try it. It's good. Uh, I will. Um, so yeah, sometimes I, those are the, some places, sometimes I'll get inspired online on Pinterest or something, um, or from another blogger or another website. Um, but lots of times like, yeah, Isaac and I always think about ideas. We have like a Google doc going where he, he comes oh, up with so some cute. really, he comes up with some really interesting ideas. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's fun. We, we try to brainstorm, um, a lot. And then lots of times my audience will ask me for stuff too. Like they'll want a healthy version of their favorite, you know, mm -hmm. soup that they had growing up mm -hmm. or something, or that they really like right now. Um, so that's where usually where I get inspired. And then also I do a lot of, um, like search engine optimization mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. And, um, I'll look for like Google trends and also think about what's going to be in season coming up. And like right now, you know, I'm going to have a cookie week next week. And, um, yeah, so there's a lot of different places. 
Yeah, I like how you've started to do the themes, like with the sweet potato. Um, oh yeah, run that you did. I mean, that's such a good idea to just kind of like keep things under an umbrella, and you know. Yeah. So, what does like um, a day in the life of like you recipe creating look like? I mean, are you just like, is your kitchen a mess? Like, I remember when I was writing my cookbook, it was like, oh my god, this is a shit storm. Oh and my you, gosh! I was like, if I have to wash one more dish. The days that I do recipe testing, it is, and I am so messy. It, it's a mess, mm-hmm. um, but I don't do those every day. So I kind of um, block my time off and I usually do um, right now. Sometimes I would do two cooking days a week, but right now I'm doing one cooking day a week. And it's also been really challenging because I don't have anyone coming in the house because of COVID to right. be my kitchen assistant. So mm-hmm. that has been a big challenge because doing it on my own, I can't do as much, um, Occasionally I'll have my mother-in-law come over, but then she's, she's who watches Olivia. So Olivia and her will both be here. So she's watching Olivia and helping me. So it's not the same as having like a dedicated helper. Um, But so I guess one day a week would be cooking. And on those days, I usually just like already have my groceries delivered the night before and I'm ready to go to get started when I start my day. And I'll usually, now that I'm doing it on my own, I'll aim for three. Sometimes I only get two done. Um, cause I'm also taking the photos. So I'm cooking and then taking the photos. Um, and sometimes the photography takes me longer than the cooking process and the recipe testing process. Um, and then it just depends on like how easy the recipe is and how many times I have to test it. Um, but those are the recipe testing days. And then on the days that I'm not recipe testing, I'm usually just online doing emails, um, working on blog posts, communicating with my team. We use Slack. So we're just like always communicating mm-hmm. um, with what's coming up. Um, and yeah, it's like a lot of admin. Oh, editing photos. That takes a long time yeah. too. Do you <laughs> so like that, that part of the process? Uh, I don't hate it. Oh, that's funny. It's my favorite. I love it- editing photos. Yes. Yeah. It. No, it's sometimes overwhelming because I take too many. Yes. I, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I took the same photo like 20 times. So now I have to pick which one of these is great and they all look the same. So then I'm yeah. like just trying to, yeah. So sometimes it's fun. And I, I do love seeing like the before and after and like, just that's fun for me. Um, but sometimes it's frustrating. Like if, sometimes it feels like it's like slowing me down to have to edit the photos. Yeah, no, I get that. And the worst is like when you take like a hundred of something and you're like, I could have used number two. <laughs> you know, right. like, this is the one that's, that would, that worked out. I know. That's what always happens when I get Isaac to take photos of me. I'm like, take more, take more. And then I'm like, use the first one. He's like, what the heck? <laughs> So kind of like, you know, your work of putting yourself out there on a day-to-day basis, as well as having it so heavily revolve around creativity. Are there any days where you're just like, you have doubt or you're just like, I want to throw your hands up in the air or you just feel exhausted and drained or is it pretty much like feeling right every day? Um, No, there are definitely days where I feel drained and especially right now like I was saying without help I think without help in the kitchen um I'm just like there's I don't want to do another dish I want to just you know hire someone else to take the photos because I'm so frustrated with how my photos are turning out like there are definitely days where I feel like that and then I go back and I'm like okay these photos aren't that bad Brittany like it's fine you're like just super critical of yourself yeah um so yeah there are definitely those days and I think for, I think maybe even last month or a month before I was feeling just like, maybe I had blogger burnout. Like I was feeling burnt out with everything. And I think it's just everything of 2020. It's not just blog, you know, yeah. my job. Um, it's everything coming to the, the surface. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that's so important for people to understand because, you know, I'm sure like there are people out there that, you know, watches you or it could be someone else that's just like oh they have like the perfect situation and they're yeah. their own boss and you know but like self doubt and being hard on yourself and having those days where you're just like i don't want to do this anymore like everybody has that so For it's sure. just like knowing that and then kind of being your own cheerleader in that way and just like trying to give yourself a pep talk and 
to just like see the the pros of it and just yeah to your point about 2020 like something's in the air on a universal level so it's just yeah give yourself some grace yeah and also I'll give myself some time off um yeah I'm I'm not on stories every single day. Sometimes my stories are just repost of what other people have made or, Mm -hmm. you know, here's my latest blog post, but I'm not like physically on there talking and um, sharing like what's going on in my life. And I think having a break like that is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, For sure. So shifting gears to motherhood a little bit. Yeah. Um, given that you are a relatively new mom, I know Olivia's like one, right? She's one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She just turned Um, one. Yeah, that's so exciting. Happy belated birthday to her. Um, So how has being a new mom kind of like impacted your work and your day-to-day and your like sense of self-care? So it's been a journey. It's been so fun. I love being a mom. Um, even more than I thought I would, which is funny, but yeah, I, I really love being a mom and Olivia's like the sweetest little thing. She's the best. So cute. Yeah. She brings so much joy to our lives. Um, but we had an interesting start. I found out at 32 weeks that she was going to have a heart defect and have open heart surgery when, right when she was born. So it's, it's been a journey for sure. And, um, yeah, we, I wasn't able to like deliver with the midwife I had picked or anything. I had to deliver at UVA and, um, then we were just at the hospital for like three weeks after it's cause she had yeah. her surgery a week after. And, um, so my journey was a little bit different, but still good. And uh, like, um, Olivia is doing really well now. So that's awesome. But with work stuff. So I did a ton of work in advance. So I was able to take a really good maternity leave of like three months. I was still checking in and doing what I felt like doing, but I, I didn't have to create because I had already created everything that was going to be posted. So that felt really good. And I'm so happy that I just did that. It was a lot of work um, yeah. to plan. And I was like making Christmas cookies in July um, yeah. last, <laughs> last, last year, but yeah. it was good. Um, I was so happy I had that time. And then um, I guess it was I so I had her November and then maybe like mid January or early February we started having Isaac's mom um we had already determined that she was going to be her sitter so we started having her come over so I could still work on practicing nursing because we had an interesting journey with that too Olivia was on a feeding tube for a while so um she wasn't able to nurse in the beginning. And so we were still re- working really hard on that. So it was nice to be able to have her come and I could still practice nursing with Olivia and have that time with her and still be able to work. So um, we did that for a while. And now it's, I think maybe like two months ago, we switched over where Olivia goes over to her grandparents' house and she's there oh. from um, for the work hours for Monday through Thursday. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, it's really awesome. And we're all quarantining. So we're able to make that work where um, we all feel safe doing that right now. So that's been super helpful. And I don't know what I would do without um, nearby family helping out and having childcare and stuff. Um, I definitely wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. But um, so that's been, it's been interesting. It's also been a struggle. Like I used to work at night a lot. Um, and I would just work, I would work a ton. Um, and I realized I have to just like cut, cut that off. Cause when Olivia gets home, I want to spend time with her. And, right. um, so it's been a good, it's been a good reminder of work-life balance. And yeah. then Fridays, like Olivia's here and Isaac and I just like manage <laughs> to, to do a little bit of work, but also hang out with yeah. her. So that's nice. Um, but yeah, it has been, it's been interesting, but also really fun. And I, yeah, like I said, I like being a mom more than I thought I would. So I've yeah. kind, of, kind of just like embraced it and I'm enjoying motherhood for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Whenever yeah. something turns out better than expected, it's a win. Yeah. <laughs> I also think as big as that. Yeah. I don't know why I would, I didn't, I, it wasn't that I didn't think I would like it. I was so excited to have a baby, but Um, I think I was just worried that I would think, oh, well, like I won't have time for myself. I won't be able to work out. Um, I won't have like, you know, a lot of alone time with Isaac. Um, and it's just, it's just changed our, the time we spend together as a family is still like, still fills me up. And, um, yeah. And even like, I get 
it's just so funny because we're like always like, okay, we're going to like put her down. And then I just like miss her and wish she was still awake. And like, (laughs) I just look at pictures on my phone, you know? So it's just, it's just funny how that works. But yeah, um, I do, I will say, I know you mentioned self-care and I will say that it has been challenging. I just have to really make it a priority. And my workouts are a lot shorter now. I do a lot of Peloton workouts. And whereas I used to think like 20 minutes, that's like nothing for a workout, yeah. but now a lot of my workouts are 20 minutes and this yeah. is what it is. Um, and I'm okay with that. So, yeah. So that's, no, that's great. And I think, um, people need to hear that too, because it's like a lot of people when it comes to health things can be all or nothing. And I think like, you know, it sounds cliche, but like those small changes matter and yeah. you know, small things can lead to big results. So, I mean, Um, and you know, especially where like fitness comes in, like, I think, and I did like Peloton this morning actually. And, you know, kind of they're like, I think it was like a 15 minute, like full body. And it's like, yeah, sometimes it like, doesn't like in theory, it doesn't feel like it would matter much, but uh, you know, it does something and it gets your heart pumping and you in your body. And so I think like, you know, to me, obviously from someone who's struggled with over-exercise in the past and just changing my mindset around movement and it just having it be like a time to just like move. Like, I think that that like even short bursts can achieve that for you. For sure. And I think it's also like we were talking about with the mindset change. Um, it something about working out and the, and maybe it's just the endorphins, but like even 15 minutes will give you that and it make you feel yeah. really good and like, feel like, Oh, I was healthy today. And like create that like I know for me when I'm like working out and drinking my water and feeling really good I also want to make good choices with what I'm eating and it just like all goes hand in hand um and even if your workout's only 15 minutes or 15 minutes or only if it's a if it's only a walk um you know I say only I think walking is a workout but some people don't yeah um yeah and so I just think yeah it's a change of mindset and then it also um all goes hand in hand so Yeah. And I feel like I've noticed too, I mean, even if it is like 15 minutes or whatever, like when I move my body and it's not right away in the morning, but when I do it before breakfast, like I just notice, like it just sets a great foundation for my day. And, um, I remember like kind of putting the two and two together as I was like really studying primal nutrition, um, and how like as human beings, we were meant to like wake up obviously with the sunrise and get into that circadian rhythm. And then like, we went and like looked for our breakfast. So like, I don't know if they would like jog to the boar or whatever, but like they would move. Um, So I think that it's like a primal thing to like, and not everyone's morning exercises by any means, nor do they have the luxury to be able to do that. But yeah, um, just a point that like, if you can fit in something like some mornings, it's like 10 minutes of sun salutations for me. And it's just something to like drop into your body and like out of the, the racing mind, it can just help. I know. I love working out in the morning, but I'm lately I've not, I work out in the afternoon now and I, it's usually like four or five, which mm-hmm. is kind of good for me because I'm more focused and alert and like, um, yeah, well just focus basically on yeah. work. And then around like three or four is when I start to get like a, a little distracted, maybe a little bit sleepy. So yeah. it's like a good energizer to work out at that time. Um, and then it's like right before Olivia gets home. So it just works out well for me right now. Um, yeah. but I love the feeling of morning workouts. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's just important, just like whatever chapter you're in, just to like do what you can, yeah. when you can and where you can. So for that's sure. Important. So what, so speaking of self-care, are there any other kind of forms that you engage in on a weekly basis? Uh, I, I've tried meditating before. Um, I don't really stick with that very well. I do a gratitude journal. Um, I was getting massages and acupuncture and all of that. I haven't really been doing that since COVID, but I haven't at all done that. Um, I would love to get back to doing that. Um, And then I think this isn't traditional self-care, but just like taking breaks from social media and um, relaxing in a way that doesn't involve like a screen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So important. And I think that's definitely becoming like more mainstream self-care just with, you know, how technology technologically focused we are and how much screen time we engage in. Like I, I would definitely lump that into the self-care is to be able to take breaks from that. And for sure. Yeah. Um, so 
what are kind of like your dreams and ambitions for eating bird food as a brand? Are we ever going to see a cookbook from you? <laughs> okay, it's, it's, it's in the plan. I'm, Yay! I'm supposed to be working on it right now. <laughs> Um, maybe I, maybe I need some tips from you. It's really hard to take. Okay. So it's really hard to take time away from recipes for the site and say, okay, yeah. this recipe I'm going to dedicate just for the cookbook. Cause it needs to be new and I'm not going to share it for like a year. Like it yeah. just seems so it's hard for me to fathom because I'm so used to like making a recipe and sharing it the next week or, you know, yeah. next month or whatever. And yeah. then also to take time away from something that's like, basically the, the thing that's earning me the most money and focus on something that, that right now, I don't know if it, what, what's going to happen with that. Um, so that's my, that's been my struggle, but I need to just, you know, say, okay, an hour a day at this time, maybe it's morning time is what I'm going to focus on the cookbook. Um, so yeah, I'm working on the proposal right now. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I definitely know what, how that feels, but I can tell you right now, I can even guarantee you that your cookbook would be very successful. So I don't think you have to worry about that, but you know, who would be, Laura Lee would be a good person to talk to because I feel as if she probably went through that same struggle of, and I think I even noticed like she had to really put her blog a little bit more on the back burner and be like, yeah, I just have to focus on the book for this time period. But I think she would share like in addition to cookbook testing, she would share like one recipe a week. Okay. She just like gave herself that permission. Um, but I can definitely see that because it, especially if you have like a good idea and you're like, I want to share this right now or something turns out really well, but I think you probably just have to think about it and more in the mindset of like, this is an investment. It's an right. investment in like the future. Um, For sure. Yeah. And, and with my cookbook process, like, you know, the publisher I worked with, it was an super aggressive deadline schedule, um, which is probably, you'll probably have a little bit more leniency, um, with the deal that you work out. But like, I mean, I was up at 4am, like, so it was just like all about like carving. Like, I feel like you could even just like set a plan, like, and you're probably really good at planning this out. Like, okay, these two or three recipes are what's going to be like in real time shared. And then like, maybe this one or two recipes is going to be just devoted to the future book. Yeah. It was just about like talking yourself through that and just knowing that like for a period of time, you're just going to have to kind of shift the way things are. I know. It's really hard for me to wrap that yeah. around. Yeah. But I just like, I just know I've been waiting on a cookbook from you for years. So, um, I know. So is great. everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, okay. That's a big plan. And then I'm trying to think if there's anything else big I'm working on. Um, not at the moment, just that's the, that's the next big thing for sure. Yeah. So what do you think? So speaking of like, what do you think is in, um, like store of how fast social media has changed? Like, obviously the way things are now, isn't going to be the way that it is forever. Right. Like I for think sure. the, I kind of call stories. I heard this at a conference and it resonated with me. Like the whole like storying is like micro blogging. Um, mm -hmm. And just sharing day to day, like, do you think that's going to stick around or like, where do you see this going or do you? Mm. Um, I always read like every year, you know, they get pro projections and I feel like for the past two years, they're saying like the internet's just going to be video in like 2025. Like it's not going to be any static images, which wow. I don't, I don't know if that's true, but it's a crazy thing to think about. And it is lots of stuff has turned into only video. Like it's just right. Uh, it's making that shift. I don't know if it'll completely shift, but um, I know focusing on video is something I really want to keep doing. Yeah. Um, I actually really like it and it does bring things to life in a different way that, photo, that photos can't do. Um, so I do think video is going to be big and it's just going to keep continuing to grow. And I do think micro blogging and I know even like two years ago, people were saying blogs are dead. And I definitely don't think that's true. Yeah. Um, so for anyone out there who is thinking about starting a blog, blogs are not dead and there's plenty of room. Um, so yeah, it's just, it is interesting. I, I, I don't know where things are going to go, honestly. Like I don't keep up to date. Like I keep up with like new social media and stuff, but I'm, I'm not usually like a super early adopter. Like even with TikTok, um, I've been experimenting with it, but I'm not, I haven't like gone full in, like, let me just do new TikToks every day or anything. Yeah. 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 And I see what you're saying about the video and I definitely agree with you there. I mean, I hope 
I mean, photography is one of my favorite mediums. So I hope yeah. it doesn't really go anywhere. And I just, you know, painting hasn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as archaic as it gets. So hopefully it'll it'll just be a little bit more of a mixed I, match. I think it will still stay, but it'll just be a lot of a lot more video. Even if you do both too, like on my blog post now, I have a video option, but then I also have the photo. So that way, because sometimes you don't want to watch the whole video to see how the recipe is made. You just want to know, oh, what should the dough look like? And you just scroll yeah. up and see the photo instead of having to watch a whole video to see what the dough looks like. So yeah. I think, there, I think, I don't think photography is going anywhere, but I do think video is going to be a bigger player. Yeah. Um, okay. So before I ask you the final question that I ask everybody, um, first tell where people can find you, um, for those who are listening. Sure. So eatingbirdfood.com is my website. And then on my social media, I'm eating bird food everywhere, except for YouTube. I'm Britt Mullins for, <laughs> yeah. So that's that. So do you do all of, so on YouTube, the videos that you post on social media, do you upload those to YouTube as well? So not all of them because YouTube people like a different format, more of like the person on the screen. So what I'll do is my videographer will film the like hands and pan style video. And then I'll go in my kitchen and film the intro and outro for the video. So me talking about the recipe and how it's going to go. And then I do voiceover of the portion that, that she had already shot, um, explaining how to make the recipe. And so I don't do every single one because of, of course that takes like more time. Um, so I try, I try to do every one a week, one a week, but after having Olivia, that's one thing that sort of like got pushed to the back burner. So Mm -hmm. I haven't been super good about doing YouTube, but I do have quite a few videos on there. One that's doing really well is my spaghetti squash one. So, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So this question that I ask everyone at the end, because I'm fascinating with morning routines, Mm -hmm. Um, what is your morning routine? I'm sure there was like a pre-baby morning routine and a post-baby morning routine. Yeah. My pre-baby morning routine would probably be more interesting to people. (laughs) (laughs) Well, why don't you explain both? Because it's good to kind of hear that contrast for people who are moms. So pre-baby, I would usually wake up. I'm trying to remember too, because now it's been like a year, but I would, um, I would usually work out in the mornings and, or no, I guess for a while, I, would, I guess right before I had Olivia, I was doing more afternoon workouts because I was going to studio workouts, which was, mm-hmm. oh, I miss that. Yeah. Me too. Um, yeah. I really miss that. Okay. So basically it just boils down to me drinking water, taking my vitamins, drinking my coffee. Um, I go through phases where I'm doing different types of coffee, like for right now I'm back on doing collagen in my coffee, just plain black coffee with collagen. We have this fancy espresso machine. So I was making like oatmeal lattes every day. That was a quarantine pleasure. (laughs) Um, and so yeah, have coffee and then I'll write my gratitude journal and sit down to work. So that's what I used to do. And I used to get started pretty right away unless I was working out in the morning. And then with Olivia, it is, wake up and she's like our alarm clock now. So she wakes up between like seven and seven 30 and we hear her stirring. Isaac goes in and gets her, changes her diaper. And then I go in there and breastfeed her and then get her dressed and ready to go. And then we just kind of like hang out around the house until like eight 45. And that's when Isaac takes her to um, her grandma's house and she watches her for the day. And then I get started with my day then. So usually I'll make well, I usually make coffee before she leaves um, and drink water, take my bath. Same sort of thing. Just yeah. it's more focused on Olivia in the morning before yeah. I, it's, it's focused on me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, yeah. You know, it's good that you just, I mean, it kind of like shows you like a shift in not priority per se, but like yeah, adaptability and For sure. that it all works out. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much. This has been so fun. And I'm sure there are so many people, um, depending on, you know, what they're looking for, whether career health advice could gain some amazing nuggets from this conversation. So I really appreciate it. And I know we'll be in touch. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. It was really fun. Yeah. Well, you have a good rest of your day and I'll talk to you, you soon. Too. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Bye.